In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about creating uh, a cut paper effect in uh, Photoshop, uh, something similar to what you see on screen here, something that has uh, a sense of dimension and layers. Uh, and uh, how we're going to achieve this is uh, very simple. We're just going to start with a, a photo of a paper texture. Uh, we're going to add some lighting effects in Photoshop and some uh, layer effects as well. But that's it. Um, and nothing uh, too much beyond that, really. Um, let's start with uh, getting a paper texture. And the best place to get that uh, is in cgtextures.com. You'll see up here, cgtextures.com. Uh, a great resource for photos, um, high res photos uh, for use in your designs. Um, mostly free. I think there are um, uh, free downloads up to 100 megabytes. Uh, beyond that, you have to have a membership. Uh, but uh, for our purposes, we can download a, f a simple uh, paper texture, such as the one I have here. Uh, it looks like a, a watercolor paper. Um, it's got some wonderful texture, and uh, you just click on it and download it and bring it into, um, into Photoshop. And I will do that right now. I'll just uh, bring that in, and we can see that we have uh, this paper texture on a layer. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer uh, because we're going to want to have at least um, one layer of or one copy of this image that has been untouched. Uh, we're always going to be referring to this untouched layer and uh, duplicating our layers from that. So I'm just going to drag that to my new layer icon down here. And um, from here, let's talk about layer effects or and some lighting effects. So if I go to Filter drop-down menu and select Render, and from there, select lighting effects. You can see that uh, we have um, uh, some options here, uh, quite a few options. Some of, some of them might seem a little intimidating. Uh, let's just break it down to the simple things that we need to know here. We have uh, three different choices of different types of lights to uh, light our surface with. Uh, spotlight is the default, I believe. Um, and spotlight, as its name implies, is uh, um, the result of a of a light um, coming from a light source, um, and it's directional and and how it uh, and how it interacts with your uh, surface. Um, we have some parameters here. Um, the intensity, of course, uh, suggests how intense that light is. We can really ramp it up so that it obliterates our surface. Um, we don't want anything nearly that powerful. In fact, I want something around this range, uh, 7 to 8, uh, would probably be fine. It's uh, bright enough to suggest that there is a light hitting the surface, but not so bright as to obliterate the detail um, and uh, texture that is there. Um, we have some other sources here. Omni uh, is just a, a omnidirectional light source, and uh, directional is sort of an ambient light. Uh, but what we want is spotlight. Again, just bright enough to suggest that there's a light source there. Uh, we also have uh, control over the, um, the width of the light cone. Um, from intense, most intense at the center uh, to the outside, how quickly does that light fall off? And uh, I think, again, we want something that suggests that there is a light there, but not a very intense light. And um, for some of these other settings here, we're not going to talk about them right now. Um, but uh, they're worth playing with um, and, and seeing how, what kind of different effects you can get. Now let's just select OK. And there we have a light hitting our uh, our background surface uh, and uh, uh, falling off to the edges. Um, and now we're going to create yet another layer over top of this one. Um, and uh, we're going to use our background layer again, this uh, pristine untouched uh, layer. I'm going to duplicate that again. And I'm going to bring that to the top. And let's rename this frame. Okay. Now, with that layer selected, I'm going to uh, just make a selection with my marquee, square marquee uh, selection tool. And that sounds that looks about right. I'm going to invert that selection because what I want to do is just select the outside of that texture so I can create a frame around uh, whatever I create inside. Uh, and uh, once I have that selected, I can, ju I can just quickly um, click the Add Layer Mask uh, uh, button down here. and I'm immediately uh, a frame or a mask is uh, created for that layer, and I can now uh, do whatever I want with this layer. Let's uh, again add a lighting effect. I'm going to render, uh, and if it's grayed out as such as, as it is here, it probably means that you've got your uh, mask selected and not your image as I have here. So let's 
again, try this again. We'll go to render, lighting effects. Now, this time I'm, I'm going to shift it just a little bit. I, I like to create the, uh, the illusion that the, the light is coming from um, uh, sort of the bottom area here. Um, I'm just going to create something that looks like this. And you can see that, uh, again, we've got a sort of a, a lighter area at the bottom right, and the light falls off as it gets to the top here. Again, suggesting a, a sort of a bottom lit uh, scenario, which um, I kind of like because it's, it's more indicative of a, of a studio type lighting uh, s uh, setup, uh, maybe something a bit more artificial. And, uh, but we, we aren't really getting any dimension here because we haven't added our layer effects yet. Uh, so I'm just going to double click this layer and I'm going to select drop shadow. We have a, a default drop shadow, shadow setting, and uh, but we want to increase the distance quite a bit more than that. We want to suggest that there's really some depth. Again, we've got a hard edged shadow here, which is more indicative of a light source that is close to our subject. We're going to want to soften that a little bit. And as we increase the size, you can see how that softens. Again, what we're doing is essentially pulling the light source away from the subject. And I can increase the spread a little bit if I want to increase some of the, the darker um, aspects of that shadow. And uh, as something else I'd like to do is um, just change the color of that um, uh, shadow. Uh, black is such a, a deadening color, I always try to at least choose a, a blue or something in that range. Um, and uh, yeah, that seems about comfortable. And one more thing though, of course, if you can see here, um, we have this drop shadow which suggests a, a dimension between the top and the, and, the, and the bottom layer, but the layer itself, this cut paper, would have some dimension. Uh, no matter how thin that paper is, it would still have some dimension even if it was cut. So let's um, do uh, something about that by adding a bevel and emboss um, effect. Um, and uh, this pretty much has the, the, the look that I was looking for. We don't want to have a, a, a dramatic, um, here if I increase the size, of, of this um, parameter here, you can see that we can really destroy the illusion of a cut paper effect quite easily by uh, ramping up the, the size too much. But if we keep it down to a, a sane small level, um, you, we can see how that actually does maintain sort of the look of a cut paper um, feel. Just enough dimension, enough thickness of that paper to catch the light, highlight on this edge, and just enough um, to catch uh, or create a shadow on this uh, side here. And again, I'm going to um, remove the, the black shadow. I'm just going to make it something a little bit uh, cool, cool in, in, in the blue range, but nothing black. Um, and there we go. So we very quickly created what looks like um, some dimensional um, layers. Um, and we can just keep on going with this. Um, let's, uh, again, uh, duplicate this background layer, bring it down to the New Layer button. I'll bring it to the top here, and um, or maybe actually I'll drop it just below the frame, and I will call this um, hills or hill. And uh, using my pen tool, I'm just going to very quickly draw a hill shape for this layer. Now, of course, what I've got here is a path, so I have to go into my Paths palette, and with that selected, I can just click this button down here, which says Turn My Path Into a Selection, which is exactly what I want. When I go back into my um, Layers palette, and with that layer selected, I can quickly um, click my Add um, Layer Mask button, and there we have um, our new layer, our hill layer. Um, but we would like to have these uh, dimension or these uh, layer effects applied here. We can very quickly add the drop shadow and the bevel and emboss to that layer uh, by clicking or control clicking on that layer and copying the layer style. Again, cl control clicking on the bottom on the hill layer and pasting that layer style into there. And you can see we've got um, the the bevel and emboss and the drop shadow um, as we as we like it. Um, let's add a little bit of a, um, uh, a light source on here. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm moving my lighting source around a little bit, uh, mostly just because I want to uh, create the uh, more um, differentiation between layers. Um, 
Uh, that's about what I'm looking for. And let's add one more layer. And from here, I'm just going to add it from uh, um, the um, shape uh, tool uh, that uh, the custom shape tool that Photoshop uh, has uh, supplied for, for us, and some of the custom shapes that are there. And in fact, this is the shape that I want. Uh, oh, where is that um, moon shape? This is, well, I can't seem to find it in this list, but that's fine. I'm going to just use this moon shape right here. I'm going to hold down the shift button to constrain it. If I don't, I can resize it as I see fit. But I'm just going to do that. And there is our, um, our shape tool. And the shape tools, of course, work in the sense that they mask off um, a colored, um, uh, it creates a, a layer of solid color uh, with a mask of that shape around it. Um, and I don't necessarily want uh, anything of, from this layer other than the selection. Uh, so if I control click within this mask um, preview here, you can see that I can create a marquee around that shape or a selection around that shape. Uh, I can actually turn that uh, layer off now and I'm going to again duplicate this bottom layer and bring it just up there. And because I still have this marquee selected with this um, paper uh, textured layer um, um, selected as well, I can click the uh, Add Layer Mask button. I can add a very quick uh, 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 layer uh, mask to this button, uh, to this uh, layer. And uh, all I need to do now is, again, paste layer style. And as you can see, we can go through um, uh, layer after layer as long as we maintain uh, that uh, process of always working from a pristine uh, uh, layer uh, that hasn't been touched um, and then going through the lighting uh, uh, rendering process and uh, adding the, the, the layer uh, styles, the bevel and emboss and drop shadow, uh, we can keep on adding uh, as many images or uh, shapes as we like until we get to you know something that has that sort of nature. Thank <laughs> you.